This is my 2019 Forest River Work and Play 30 QBS. It is 38 feet 11 inches long. It sleeps eight people, or so they say. We'll kind of walk through that when we go inside. It has a 12 and a half foot garage. And let's go through the numbers and I'll give you an owner's review of what this is. Every video I've seen on, on YouTube about these campers and these toy haulers has been specifically from a dealer. I wanted to give you folks just an idea of what an actual owner thinks about these things. The air conditioner is on, so there might be a little extra noise there. Uh, first things first, it does not come with a slide topper. I did add a slide topper. I think that made sense. It wasn't a whole lot of money. It was an easy upgrade for my son and I to do, but it certainly makes sense considering uh, the damage that water can do if it does get in there and you don't have the time and energy to get up there and clean those off. <clears throat> yes, it comes with quote-unquote China bombs. Here's my position on that. Those tires have a very high weight rating, and if you've got them, if you keep them correctly pressurized, meaning the right number of, right amount of air in the tires, you shouldn't have any problems. I'm certainly not going to replace these anytime soon. I'm going to keep an eye on them. I'll make sure they have uh, 80 psi in them cold before I leave on a trip. I'll stop regularly to inspect them. But that leads me to the next point, which is the weight of this unit, okay? When you're buying a new camper and a toy hauler, you've got to understand the manufacturer could do a lot better around the axles and the components that they use. Um, let's look at this machine in particular. This, this toy hauler has 6,000 pound axles. Two 6,000 pound axles with tires that are rated for something like 3,700 pounds apiece. So the tires are fine for the axle rating if you treat them right, if you keep them where they need to be and you don't overload the coach. The problem is these are incredibly easy to overload. So let's walk through why I'm making that statement. Here is the information on this camper, okay? It has a payload of 4,289 pounds total. That's for this specific unit. Again, you guys can see, it's getting 6,000 pound axles, two of them, with a gross vehicle weight rating of 13,486 pounds. So, 4,200 pounds of payload. Well, I just took this to the cat scale and weighed it exactly how it sits with my 2019 Razor uh, Turbo S with a Gatekeeper Design cage and some suspension components in it. It's ready for us to camp minus food. So, there's no water in it. The holding tanks are empty. It has extension cords. It has empty sewer hoses. It has my razor in it. It's got my wife and I's clothes. It's got the things that we would use to camp, including a uh, Blackstone 22-inch griddle. And I'm here to tell you, across the scales, just like it sits right now, when you factor in what the empty weight of my truck is and subtract that from the, the total weight on the weight slip, when we went across the cat scale, this camper is sitting at 13,120 pounds on a maximum capacity of 13,486. So with no food at all, I'm only 300 some pounds away from being overweight. And what you've got to remember is again, remember, we just talked about this, 6,000 pound axles. Two 6,000 pound axles, that's 12,000 pounds that this thing's going to be able to take. <laughs> The stinking tongue weight on my truck, what my truck was carrying, was 1,430 pounds. So now let's walk inside the camper, and I'll show you what I have in it, and it's going to help you understand again why I'm saying the tires aren't a problem. It's people unwittingly overloading their campers. I'll pick up back in a second when I get inside. All right. I'm inside the camper right now. And I'll show you what we're carrying to give you an idea of how easy it is to overload a camper. Again, there is no food in the refrigerator. Okay, it's empty. There's nothing in the freezer. There's no food in the fridge. <laughs> I'm just cooling it down for a trip we're taking for the 4th of July. Yes, we have some dishes in the sink. Uh, that's where we store them when we're underway. 
up here we have a couple of things there's not a great deal of stuff up there i think there's a toaster and a blender in that cabinet this cabinet has two plastic bowls in it and a rack for the oven this cabinet has some glasses and some coots and coosies and they're not even glass glasses they're plastic glasses so not a lot of weight right there down here underneath we have a couple of totes that don't have much in them. There's a frying pan on the one on the right, a platter, and a couple of other pans on the left, and some cleaning solutions. So not a significant amount of stuff inside there. Under the sink here, cleaning supplies, paper towels, and a paper towel rack. When it comes to the entertainment center, there are some DVDs up here. They certainly don't weigh a lot. There are some kids' movies and stuff up there. I do have a couple of card games and some other things there. Not a significant amount of stuff that's going to weigh a ton. My wife and I did not like the table that came with this, so we used TV trays on that uh, sleeper sofa for when we're eating. That's a, kind of a nice way to do it and save room inside the camper. Inside the pantry, <clears throat> inside the pantry of paper cups, uh, paper plates, well, plastic cups, paper plates. Uh, no real food to speak of. Much the same down here. It's paper plates, napkins, and some 4th of July decorations. In the bedroom area, upstairs in these uh, sections, there's really nothing there. A, pair, a couple of pairs of shorts. Those are empty. This has got some clothes hanging in it. Uh, my side has some clothes hanging in it. And then underneath the bed, I do have some totes that contain tools. There is a, um, a variety of tools in here. There's a little impact driver, nothing major. There's some fireworks that we're gonna shoot off, not a big deal there. But again, it doesn't take long for stuff to add up when you're putting stuff inside your camper. Let's look at the garage. Well, before we do that, I'll show you the bathroom. Um, my wife and I, I'm 5'7", my wife is 5'4", so yes, it's got a couple of step stools so we can reach things inside the camper. We've added some command hooks. Inside the garage. Okay, this is a 2019 Razor Turbo S. It has a full tank of fuel. It has a gatekeeper design cage. It has... Uh, special carriers manufacturing suspension components that are steel instead of the aluminum that comes on it. And there is a Ryfab storage box back here that's going to have, you can't see it in the dark, but it's got tools in it and um, some uh, an empty cooler, a couple other things, some spare tire plugs. When it comes to the Happy Jack bed system, we just have the bed made for some friends that are going to be staying with us. And sandwiched between the two beds, I have a set of tables, folding tables, and two uh, rocking camp chairs. When it comes to the, the uh, factory storage inside the camper, uh, in the garage, I've got a uh, set of helmets in the left-hand cabinet. The right-hand cabinet has paper towels and uh, some cleaning solutions and a, can and a one-pound uh, tank of propane for a grill. That's what's in here, uh, and you can tell uh, it's not a significant amount. It's not like I packed this thing full, yet I have just over 300 pounds of carrying capacity. So consider that when when you're buying this. I'm sorry, there's also a, a 10 by 10 a folding canopy down there. And just for completeness, I'm going to show you what is inside our uh, storage compartment in the front to give you an idea there and then we'll talk about overall weight this is my front storage compartment turn the light on in there so you can see a little bit there is a 22 inch blackstone griddle there is a tote that has cleaning supplies in it there is a two and a half gallon roto packs full of high test fuel for my razor there's a milk crate with a propane coleman lantern and two one pound propane bottles and two lighters with some extra uh, mantles for the lighter or for the the lantern and there are two camp chairs and two spare axles for my razor in addition to a set of impact sockets and a fire extinguisher okay so not a great deal of stuff that's inside here and i don't really have a significant uh, amount of additional things inside the generator compartment the generator compartment has a spare sewer hose a 50 foot extension cord for my 50 amp service it has two uh, garden hoses one for potable water one for cleaning out the septic 
on, on the unit, and it has a couple of extension cords. That's the extent of what's inside there. So again, yes, there's 30 gallons of gas in the fuel station. It is full. So that's what you've got to consider when you're going to buy one of these things. If you think, you know, oh, it's great. It's got a 12 and a half foot garage. My Razor fits. Okay, yes, your Razor does fit. And as long as you're conscious about how you load it, these tires are going to be fine and it's going to be a good unit for you. However, it is incredibly easy to overload this thing. If you were to take it in an existing trim, exactly how as I have it, but decided you wanted to dry camp and you filled the 100 gallon fuel tank, you're going to be 500 pounds overweight on this camper. Okay? That's what you've got to consider. Those are things that you've got to understand when you're buying one of these. It's very easy to overload it. I'm not going to stress about my Castle Rock tires. I'm going to make sure that they have the right pressure in them. I'm going to get a, TPS, a TPMS system added to my truck so I know what's going on. I'm going to tow it at 65 miles an hour maximum speed. I'm not stressed about these tires. I think they're going to be great. But it's incredibly important that you understand when you buy one of these, which it's a great camper. You've, you've got to be careful, folks, when you load one of these. Um, it's very easy to cause a bad day for yourself inadvertently. And that's actually what I wanted to stress here. It's so stinking easy to overload one of these when they've got this big garage. Um, there's a couple of things that I, that I would uh, wish Forest River would change. But would I buy another one? I think it depends. So would I buy another work and play? I think... If Forest River makes some changes, uh, inc improves their quality overall, I think I'm going to say yes. But for right now, my answer is maybe. And the reason I say that is there's a couple of challenges with it. We just spent a lot of time talking about how easy it is to overload it and what the weight capacities are and, and just how stinking fast you can make it overweight. But boy, for the very first thing that Forest River can do to this work and play toy hauler, something that's designed to haul a lot of heavy toys, okay? They really need to put 7,000 pound axles on this. 7,000 pound axles is going to take the increased capacity to just under 16,000 pounds, which is just great. Geez, an extra 50 can tow it with no trouble at all. And it would be a much better, much safer experience for everybody if it had 7,000 pound axles. I don't understand why you'd put 6,000 pound axles under something that's nearly 40 feet long. It's not like you're going to get a folk, some folks to grab an F-150 with an EcoBoost and tow this. So why not structure it? Why not build it for three quarter ton trucks and up? Make it safe. Make it easy. Put the right tires on it to support all that weight and just minimize the risks. Does it tow good <clears throat> with my razor inside and the right amount of weight distribution to the front so that my truck is carrying 1,450 to 1,500 pounds of the trailer? Yes, it tows fine. With my razor out of it, exactly as it sits, it tows stinking great. But with my razor in there, if I don't m intentionally move things to the front of this coach, it's a mess to tow. Now, as for problems, um, right there, the combo oven slash microwave doesn't work. Hasn't worked since the second I bought it. That zero colon zero zero is all it's ever done. The microwave doesn't even boil water. Will Forest River fix it under warranty? I'm positive they will. I'm just not going to take it in for some insignificant problem and actually risk missing the summer because the dealer's waiting on parts. This winter... I've got a list of things that are wrong. I can manage it. I'll bring it in, and they'll fix it. I don't, I'm not concerned about that, but I'm just not actually willing to give up my camping season because the microwave doesn't work. Um, but there are some other challenges. Um, one of the other things that really frustrated us was inside the bathroom. This uh, sh the shower door, there was no silicone on the inside, no caulking at all. So the very first time my wife took a shower, we had a little river of water running down here because there was nothing stopping the water in here. We've had to go in, we've had to apply silicone caulk along all of the sides of the camper, or of the shower. That, in my mind, is inexcusable. It's crazy that I should have to do that. The other thing that really frustrated me about this bathroom is right down there, you can see that there's a, there's a clean out or access to the drain. I needed to open that after uh, we got home 
because uh, there was no, we tested the shower and there was no water in the gray tank. Well, I popped that little access open and the plumbing from the shower pan wasn't connected to anything. I had to dry all the water out, suck it out with a, with a wet vac, and then um, dry it all out, put a fan in there, so can make sure it's not gonna mold, physically connect and tighten all the plumbing, and, and I'm sure it's gonna be fine now, but it's just crazy to me that that gets out of the stinking factory. The locks for the shower door don't work at all, so I'm using a bungee cord. I mean, it's, it's nitpicking, I know, and I, I'm fine with it. I'm not gonna complain about that. I'm not even gonna ask the dealer to fix it. That's just an acceptable solution for me. But it's actually crazy to me that the shower leaked. And also, where they mounted the shower head. They had the shower head straight on there in the middle. And if, if you turned it just a little bit, water would shoot right onto the floor. So we put it in a new mount, bought a new shower head, because the one that comes with it is a $10 piece of crap. We got a good shower head. It works in the RV. We stick it over there in the corner. And it shouldn't. we don't expect any more problems from the shower. This is also how you access the back of the refrigerator because the refrigerator is not facing an external wall, if anybody was wondering. So yes, I'm, I'm mostly happy with it. We've had to make a couple of upgrades because, again, they build these things thinking cheap. This was the, the MSRP in this unit was just over $52,000. I paid far less than that. I paid middle 30s. But I needed to do some things to make it better. This DVD player that comes with it, it's okay. And I, I'm not—I didn't buy this to watch movies. Um, but the the speakers and the amplifier that come with it are garbage. It's, it's, this stinking thing has six watts per channel to do two speakers inside and two speakers outside. Well, it's terrible. So much so when the air conditioning is on, I couldn't hear the TV when it turned all the way up to 40. So uh, minor upgrade from me. I bought a Rockford Fosgate two-channel amplifier, 50 watts per channel, wired it in myself, made it right, and actually replaced the cheap garbage thinking speakers in here with some 50 watt per channel JBL speakers. Now it's a marked improvement. The sound is a lot better. We can watch TV in here without any problems with the air conditioning on and everything's great. Um, when it comes to the sound system in the garage, the story's uh, much the same. Uh, this had a very crappy, cheap little head unit that uh, had six watts per channel for two speakers inside and two speakers on the on the back deck, the patio deck. <clears throat> it just wasn't cutting it. So uh, I took it out and bought a uh, Amazon, bought an Alpine head unit on Amazon for not a lot of money. It was on a, under a hundred bucks. Uh, wired it into the existing speakers. It's 24 watts per channel or 18 watts per channel. And it sounds good in here. It works great. I've got no problems. The outdoor speakers take it. These inside speakers are fine. I'm not going to replace them. Second thing, I didn't, again, I didn't buy it for like a disco, okay? But I would like it to actually sound somewhat good. Speaking, uh, speaking of the, the patio, actually, one thing I want to highlight, that weight that I gave you is sans the patio hardware. I've removed the patio hardware from the camper because we don't use it. So I didn't want that extra weight back there. And it's probably 150 to 160 pounds in gates and cables that I took off. Will, uh, would I put it back on? Maybe, but it's a patio that comes off the back. The coach is f on nearly 40 feet long. So I need a minimum of a 60 foot space to actually stick it back there, open the patio, and, and use it out there and uh, to me it's just very gimmicky i just as soon use the awning on the party side of the camper and and be done with it i don't know that the that the uh actual patio system gives us anything an additional value now you can tell me chris that's fine but i've got dogs or whatever but it's perfect if you've got little dogs that need to run around and need a space you don't want to fence them in i think that's a great solution i would almost prefer that they actually marketed the patio as a, you know uh, a, a place to contain your children and your pets because that's where the that's where it would really be valuable to me this is a two seat razor okay that factory cage that i i pulled off of here and this gatekeeper design cage the gatekeeper design cage only weighs about 20 pounds more than the factory cage that came off and you can actually see how much more clearance i've got i mean full disclosure the existing Turbo S on um, a Polaris or with a Polaris um, cage is going to fit in here 
But after you drive down the road, the the way that these Turbo S's work, they've got electronic dampened suspension, and it'll rise up as it's bouncing in comfort mode, which is how you're supposed to transport it. And then you'd come in here and it'd be really stinking close to the Happy Jack bed. So I'm glad that I've got the six the, the six inch chop uh, on, my, on my razor. Forest River, if you're listening, if you watch this video, there's actually some things you can be doing to make these more appealing for buyers. Boy, I, <clears throat> I, I certainly would put larger axles on it. I certainly would put better tires on it. And I would certainly up the quality of some of the appliances. Um, this thing is $213 on Amazon. I almost just bought a new one and stuck it in there myself instead of dealing with the warranty claim. But, oh, boy, there is one other thing. My awning. My awning works perfectly fine except the wind detection and rain detection doesn't work. So that's a, that's a, a control panel. It's not a huge deal. It's something I'm going to have fixed. But, again, I've got this minor thinking list. Here's the things that dealer needs to fix when I've got an opportunity to drop them off. And we've been extraordinarily lucky because we've had very few problems. I read some of the toy hauler web pages, and my goodness, it's crazy how much stuff goes wrong with these. So we've been very good. Um, things I'm, I'm also going to buy to protect myself. Uh, number one, I've got Level Mate Pro up there. It makes a big difference in leveling this thing. But down here in your uh, control center, there is a converter that converter manages all of the 12 volt and battery charging for this unit they're like 206 dollars for a spare one i'm going to buy one from from the internet stick it in my truck if something goes wrong we'll be able to fix it it's like five wires it's a very easy fix to me i don't mind spending a little bit of money to have it as a, as a spare so my camping trip doesn't get ruined uh again I think you're safe buying one if you're if you go into it eyes wide open. I would make sure that you check that all the plumbing is connected because the sink also I meant neglected to mention that my sink wasn't even plumbed together. We tested the hot water and I opened that cabinet and it was a pool of water because the sink wasn't connected. The drain wasn't connected. So it's little things like that that really frustrate me in an otherwise great unit. Boy, I I like the floor plan. I like the capacity. I like what it does for my wife and I and our razor. Jeez. And shit, I've got an X3. My X3 XMR Turbo R fits inside the garage exactly the same. It uses about another 11 inches of space, but there's still room to walk behind it to, to, to strap it in. I can tow it just fine. The weights are almost exactly the same. Uh, so whether you're a, a Polaris person or a Can-Am person, as long as you've got a two-seater, you're going to be fine with a 12.5-foot garage in uh, work and play 30 QBS. Feel free to like and comment. I don't care if you subscribe. I don't do the YouTube thing for money. But I do actually like to put some videos out there that are instructional. And uh, if you've got similar feedback or if you've had challenges with yours, if you've got work and play specific, 30 QBS work and play experience, I'd like you to comment and tell me how yours went so uh, we can work together to help Forest River make things better. The RV industry is a shambles right now. So many of, of the units that they build, they're crap. Uh, we walk through a number of um, Heartland Torque toy haulers at the dealer that we bought this from, and every single cabinet was crooked. I couldn't find a straight cabinet door in eight Heartland Torque toy haulers at that, at that RV dealer. It was just stunning to me, the lack of quality. Um, I'm a handy kind of person. I don't mind fixing things. I've addressed a number of the problems on the coach myself. I'm sure I'm going to have to address a few more. Um, there's actually one other minor annoyance. They do put a sewer hose storage tube underneath the camper. It holds a five-foot hose. What the hell good is that? Uh, everybody I know uses a 10 or or 15 foot hose. At least give me enough capacity. If you're going to go out of the way and stick something to the bottom of my coach to hold the septic tank, at least or the, the sewer hose, at least make sure it's going to hold at least 10 feet of sewer hose. It's just crazy to me. So, yeah, the industry has a lot of problems. Uh, they really could do a lot more to correct things um, and produce more quality units that people will be proud to buy. I expect that I'm going to get six or seven years out of this. Um, I hope I'm going to be able to get six or seven trouble-free years out of it. We'll see. 
Um, some of the other brands, when I walked through some of the Salem toy haulers, I thought that they would last two years just based on the construction and looking at it. I can't imagine expecting to get more than two or three years out of something like that. And if you pay twenty five or $30,000, you don't want to get more than two years out of it. So things to consider. Toy haulers are fantastic, but boy, are they easy to overload. Again, you can see what's inside this, this, this unit. There is not a ton of stuff inside here, and we're almost at max capacity. Okay, just keep that in mind, and uh, look forward to hearing your comments. Thanks.